Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So before we begin on today's topic, thank you so much to today's fan art. Thank you so much for drawing me. I love this picture and I love, love, love the facial expressions. Um, honestly, this is so cute. Thank you so much for drawing me. The link to the art will be in the description as always. So today we're gonna need holy water, um, but I don't have any, so we're gonna use my favorite replacement, which is setting spray. Okay. So the topic at hand is, this is what it's like to fall in love with your brother. An article posted by Cosmopolitan, the very same people who are saying that if you let your kid dress up as Moana for Halloween, you are racist. Anyways, I'm gonna give you a brief summary and then I wanna talk about some very specific parts of this article. And then I'll link it below so you can make up your own mind. So, there's a woman called Melissa. She was, or thought she was, an only child. And when she was pretty young, her father committed suicide. Consequently, her mother's mental health began to decline and Melissa became her caretaker at a young age. Because their home life was kind of difficult, Melissa believes her mom was spoiling her by letting her do pretty much whatever she wanted to the point where when Melissa was 14, she had a much older lover move in with them. So fast forward to 2015 and Melissa receives a Facebook request from Chris, a man she had no idea existed, didn't know who the hell he was, and he told her, your dad was not your dad, your mom lied to you your whole life about who your father was. And Chris then claimed to be the stepson of Melissa's real biological father. Later on, he even says that there are other half-siblings that she has. So after meeting Chris, the stepbrother, um, he gives her contact information to Brian, one of her half-siblings. Brian is the important guy, you can forget about Chris now. So, Brian and Melissa meet up. She remembers, here it says, she remembers having an immediate and intense reaction to Brian's voice. She was really attracted to it. So then the, the pair say that they both scroll through each other's Facebook and they both had like sexual fantasies. Two hours away, in the home he shared with his wife, Brian experienced the same thing. Wife, okay? He has a wife. Anyways, so they end up meeting and Melissa drives two hours uh, to meet her brother. She says, it was love at first sight, absolutely the craziest thing I've ever experienced. The sexual force was like I was levitating off earth, your body instantly craves the other person. The feeling was mutual. So they end up going to a bar. Brian grabbed Melissa's hand and found himself telling her everything. He was talking about his deepest secrets, blah, blah, blah. After a drink, they get back in the car and tear each other's clothes off and couldn't keep their hands off each other apparently. And Melissa recounts, it was primal, but we were all so scared, like what's wrong with us? That's a question I also have, but anyways. The article then continues to give some examples of why this is not that strange. Um, one of which uh, is called GSA. GSA is genetic sexual attraction. The, the, gen the term was coined uh, in the 1980s. Um, while the American Psychological Association does not use the term, GSA is what it sounds like, a phenomenon that occurs when two family members who were separated in early life eventually meet and experience an intense sexual attraction to each other, though not all act on it, thank God. So, the point I want to focus on comes towards the ending. There's a section called Turn their, Turning Their Lives Upside Down. So, here we found out something that makes this even more troubling, as if we needed that, right? So it says, two weeks after they met, Brian left his wife, and he said that Melissa wasn't the reason she, he left, but she was the catalyst. And he said that he hasn't told his ex or his mother and siblings about the sexual part of his relationship with Melissa, to which I say no shit because you know it's fucked up and they're gonna be like, what the hell, dude, she's your half-sister. Melissa hasn't told her family either. She still lives with her two teenage daughters and her husband, who she calls an open-minded guy, adding that in nearly two decades together, she's been with multiple other people. He's allowed it because he knows who I am and my upbringing. They haven't been intimate in five or six years, but are committed to co-parenting. So the kids don't know everything, but sure as hell, Melissa goes back to Brian's house to sleep over every Saturday night. 
She says that divorce isn't an option because she wants her daughters to live the rest of their childhood in a stable and consistent environment. So, do I have to explain why this is fucked up? The worst part is that if you try and read this article, it does look somewhat of an apologist, an incest apologist. I'm not saying Cosmopolitan is for incest, don't sue me. I'm just saying the tone of the article is a little bit bizarre to me. You can read it and you can make up your own mind, but this is weird. And it adds on also that since she has a different last name on her uh, birth certificate, they could technically get married even if it is illegal. <sighs> then at the very end, Brian says, I don't feel like we're more special than anyone else, but to receive this kind of love is a gift. Few human beings get to experience something at this level and it's not taboo, it's nothing wrong. This is just like love. Perf this just feels like love, perfect love. Okay, I'm not contesting that this might feel like love, that you guys love each other or whatever the fuck, but let's not pretend that this isn't taboo. You haven't told your families, hello, it's because it's taboo that you don't want to tell them. It's because it's taboo that it's illegal. And I understand they were separated at birth, so it is a different thing than a brother that you were living in the house with, but they went to meet each other in their heads knowing, hey, I'm about to go meet my sibling. Hey, I'm gonna go back to meet my brother, my sister. They went knowing that. So automatically, I'd assume that there would be something in your head saying, hey, like this is not someone you can fuck, you know? But I guess that didn't work out here. And, you know, I wanna try to be understanding about this, but at the same time, if this guy is acting like it's not taboo, that's a really big problem because you're effectively ignoring the reality. I would respect them more if they said, hey, we know this is taboo, we know this is like fucked up, but this is how it is. I'd respect that more than people who are like, oh no, this is like completely normal because it's not normal. And the fact that you're hiding it from people says everything. So I found this article on Psychology Today, which completely goes against everything I'm saying, but if you wanna read it, it's there. Um, but pretty much it's talking about the fact that incest for us is very much tied to morality, of course, and there are a bunch of examples about how, you know, like a lot of people say that incest is bad because when you have, if you have children, they could have, you know, uh, genetic defects. And then the person argues, well, what if they use birth control and then, you know, it just kind of goes through the motions of analyzing why it is that we have an issue with incest. And um, while I can see the point that morality and emotion have very much to do with why we don't appreciate incest and why it's illegal in a lot of places, I still stand by the notion that it is a no for me. And I think that it can be extremely detrimental. I don't think it's healthy. Um, yeah, I just really have no words about this. And it's kind of crazy to me that Cosmopolitan went out of their way to post something like this. And I don't know if it's, you know, to to boost ratings or something, but this is so, so wild to me. Um, and the thing is like, we also have to talk about the fact that both of these people had families, have families. So I feel like that is an extra layer that corrupts this even more because being unfaithful undeniably is wrong. Um, and I guess really the only unfaithful person was Brian because Melissa has an open marriage or something, which I feel really bad for her husband because like, imagine having a wife who's sleeping with a bunch of other people, not sleeping with you, but still parenting with you. And then you find out that she's sleeping with her half brother. I mean, that's horrible. I feel bad for him. Um, but aside from that, Brian had a wife. I think he also had a kid and he blew that off two weeks after meeting Melissa and fine, maybe she was the catalyst, but at the same time, it's just like, do you have no shame? This is so disgusting to me that he would go out, meet someone, and that's just the end of his marriage, you know? Like, I, I don't presume to know his marriage. It just seems a little bit ridiculous that meeting his half-sister and then he falls in love with her immediately and that's what makes his marriage end. Especially since I feel like being with his half-sister would put a strain on his relationship with his child too. So, I don't know, this is just, morally, I find this extremely, extremely troubling. Um, emotionally also, 
obviously the thing is people are going to try and argue that you know like science says that it's not terrible and that it maybe isn't traumatic and that maybe they're being safe and they're never gonna have children so they're never gonna have birth defects but the reality is why are we choosing to accept this kind of behavior because i'm all for opening new doors considering new things but there's a point where we need to stop What's, what's gonna stop us from telling a brother and sister who live in the same house that it's fine, that they can be together, and that it's completely normal? I mean, that's what scares me about all this. It's that it's getting the ball rolling, and when is it gonna stop rolling? What's gonna stop that from rolling? Usually you'd say laws, but these people don't give two fucks about the laws. <sighs> this was mentally draining. Oh my god. Anyways, guys, uh, I'm gonna go and... Uh, pretend this video never happened. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this and thank you so much for watching.